Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. The aggregate economy is always fluctuating, but one thing is certain. Conditions are perfect when it rests at long-run equilibrium. Prices are stable, the unemployment rate is at its natural rate of 4-6%, to and the economy is producing real GDP at full capacity. But fundamental changes in aggregate demand can create GDP gaps, causing imperfect economic conditions to exist. When aggregate demand is too low, the economy will be experiencing a recessionary gap. Real GDP will contract, and the economy will be producing output at too slow a rate, causing cyclical unemployment and driving unemployment above 6%. When aggregate demand is too high, the economy will experience an inflationary gap. Real GDP will expand, and the economy will be producing output at too fast a rate, causing excessive inflation of prices, and meaning it's harder for consumers to meet their utility. Ideally, flexible wages and prices will naturally close GDP gaps and return the economy to long-run equilibrium. But what if that doesn't happen? If excessive unemployment or excessive inflation persists for some time, it's an indicator that wages and prices are sticky, or the economy may be experiencing a wage price spiral. Without government intervention, the economy may be headed for serious trouble. When the economy can no longer fix itself, the Keynesian theory of economics kicks in, and the government can use several public policy options to stabilize the economy. In this unit, we'll focus on the legislative tools at government's disposal which are known as fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is defined as the direct actions of government that are intended to influence aggregate demand and change economic conditions. These actions are implemented through changes in government spending and changes in tax policy. Because government spending is a component of aggregate demand, changing government expenditures will directly affect aggregate demand and can serve to close GDP gaps when they exist. Altering taxes on consumers will have an effect on consumer disposable income, which in turn affects the ability of consumers to spend. Because consumer spending is a component of aggregate demand, changing taxes on consumers can directly affect aggregate demand and can close GDP gaps when they exist. According to Keynesian economists, the use of fiscal policy is necessary when the aggregate economy is experiencing excessive inflation or economic contraction and the free market fails to correct itself. Without government intervention, the economy will spiral out of control and economic conditions will worsen. Using policy correctly can stabilize aggregate demand and return the economy to equilibrium. There are two types of fiscal policy. The first is expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy is appropriate when the economy is in a recessionary gap and real GDP output is being produced at too slow a rate, causing excessive unemployment. Government has two policy options to stabilize the economy and stimulate aggregate demand. Increase government spending or decrease personal taxes. Increasing government spending allows the government to become a consumer and purchase goods and services when consumers and firms are unwilling or unable to. Think about it. A recessionary gap exists because aggregate demand is too low. Consumer spending and investment spending are weak, and exported goods and services aren't selling in foreign countries. If wages and prices are sticky, these conditions won't improve, and the recessionary gap will only get worse. The only participant with the ability to purchase goods and services in the domestic economy is government. Using tax revenue, government can authorize an increase in expenditures, acting as a consumer in the aggregate economy. Think of the government as a consumer, but with a huge budget. It will purchase billions of dollars worth of goods and services that can be put to use to serve the citizenry like military goods, public goods, and vital municipal services. We're talking about producing an army and a navy, building schools, libraries, and roadways, or providing police and fire departments. This increase in government spending drives consumerism, causing aggregate demand to increase. To meet higher demand, firms will hire new workers in order to scale their production levels, causing unemployment to decrease. This will cause real GDP growth, and the economy will return to long-run equilibrium. Decreasing personal taxes allows consumers to keep more of their disposable income 
acting as a catalyst for greater consumer spending in the aggregate economy. Consumers who are either unwilling or unable to purchase goods and services now have the disposable income to consume economic goods. Every dollar in disposable income gained when taxes are decreased could potentially be used towards boosting consumerism, causing aggregate demand to increase. To meet higher demand, firms will need to hire new workers in order to scale their production levels, causing unemployment to decrease. This will cause real GDP growth, and the economy will return to long-run equilibrium. Of course, government can also use a combination of both policies to close a recessionary gap. Because both policy options have the same goals of increasing real GDP output and reducing unemployment, the policies can be used together to stimulate aggregate demand and correct economic conditions. The second type of fiscal policy is contractionary fiscal policy. Contractionary fiscal policy is appropriate when the economy is in an inflationary gap and real GDP output is being produced at too fast a rate, causing excessive inflation. Government has two policy options to stabilize the economy and reduce aggregate demand, decrease government spending or increase personal taxes. Decreasing government spending allows the government to directly decrease aggregate demand by scaling back its expenditures. Let's say that massive consumer spending and investment spending has driven the economy into a positive GDP gap with demand pull inflation, and consumerism has no signs of slowing down. Government can reduce its spending by billions of dollars, causing aggregate demand to decrease. As aggregate demand slows, price levels decrease, and harmful inflation is reduced. This will cause real GDP contraction, and the economy will return to long-run equilibrium. Increasing personal taxes takes disposable income away from consumers, which serves to reduce consumer spending in the aggregate economy. With less income to spend, consumers simply don't have the ability to buy as many goods and services as they used to, while others are unwilling to purchase at the same rate now that their wallets are a little lighter. Put simply, Consumers simply stop buying because they have less income to spend, and consumerism slows down, causing aggregate demand to decrease. As aggregate demand slows, price levels will decrease, and harmful inflation will be reduced. This will cause real GDP contraction, and the economy will return to long-run equilibrium. Of course, government could also use a combination of both policies to close an inflationary gap. Because both policies have the same goal, of reducing real GDP output and reducing inflation. The policies can be used together to reduce aggregate demand and correct economic conditions. Not only are there different types of fiscal policy, but government can implement fiscal policy in two different ways. The first is through discretionary means. Discretionary fiscal policy is implemented through a direct act of government, like passing a bill or a law. The New Deal, Great Society, and the Bush tax cuts are all examples of discretionary fiscal policy. The second way fiscal policy is implemented is through non-discretionary means. Non-discretionary fiscal policy is implemented without a direct action of government. These measures are also known as automatic stabilizers because they activate during fluctuations in the business cycle without any direct action needed. For example, unemployment benefits are non-discretionary fiscal policy that kick in automatically when the economy contracts. As unemployment increases, more workers are eligible for unemployment benefits. When they receive these benefits, they use the supplemental income to buy goods and services to meet their needs at once until they can find a new job. This stabilizes aggregate demand and helps to improve economic conditions. When the economy overheats and moves into an inflationary gap, fewer workers are eligible for unemployment benefits. As they lose their supplemental income, consumerism slows, reducing aggregate demand and helping to improve economic conditions. And that's types of fiscal policy. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my effects of fiscal policy video, or you can click here for my macro minute video on demand side versus supply side economics. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.